Right, we're going to have a think tonight about the story of Zacchaeus. If you've been looking on Facebook this week, you'll know that right the way through the week that we've had a series of posts all about Zacchaeus. And the idea was that by doing that, we would lead up to it. Uh, if you can put the first slide up for me, please, Chris. The story of Zacchaeus can be found in Luke chapter 19 and verses 1 to 10. And of course, the thing that we know most about Zacchaeus was that he was a tax collector. Is that the thing that we know most about him? Or is the fact that he was short, is that the thing that we know most about him? Yeah, I think it is, isn't it? The Bible says he was short of stature. And it's interesting, really, that the Bible picks that up because you know, the whole idea of the story of Zacchaeus was that he was an outcast. I mean, he was a Jew, but he was working for the Romans. He was a tax collector. Not only was he a tax collector, but when he collected taxes, he would actually, well, to quote Ishmael in his song, he'd rip them off as well as just collecting what he'd owe. He would rob from people. He'd make his own people's lives harder as he was serving the Romans. And on one level, you could say, Zacchaeus, well, that would have been enough to make him unpopular. That would have been enough to make him a sinner. That would be enough to make him an outcast. So why does the Bible make a point that he was a little fella? Why does the Bible make the point that he was short of stature? I want to encourage you to read Zacchaeus' story in Luke 19, verse 1 to 10. We know, of course, that Zacchaeus had heard that Jesus was coming to town, coming to Jericho, and so he wanted to see Jesus. But when he got out to see Jesus, the crowd noticed him there, and because he was short of stature, he couldn't see over the crowd. So he climbed a what? Sycamore tree, specifically a sycamore tree, specifically the sycamore fig. I never understood this growing up because the sycamore tree always looked to me like really big tree, really smooth trunk. How on earth did he climb up there? But actually, Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore fig. Cue next slide, please, Chris. There you are. And as you can see, right down at ground level, it splits off its different trunks, which makes it an ideal tree to climb. Also, ideal tree, I thought, looking at that one, for a treehouse. I mean, really, isn't it? I mean, brilliant. And so he climbed the sycamore tree. And when Jesus got to the bottom of the sycamore tree, he called him down. And Zacchaeus was a transformed man after he spoke to Jesus. Before he spoke to Jesus, he was a thief. Before he spoke to Jesus, he would take more than he was allowed to. When he spoke to Jesus, this happened. Verse 8. Zacchaeus and stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will restore it fourfold. That's massive, isn't it? You know, I mean, to be honest with you, fourfold, that's a good interest return on any investment, isn't it? You know, if you can get that. The story of Zacchaeus. And I got to thinking about why the Bible talks about how Zacchaeus, we can just leave that up please, Chris, how Zacchaeus was short of stature. And I wondered about the significance of it in his story. Have you ever felt inadequate? Put your hand up if you've ever felt inadequate. Aye, absolutely, I'll put two hands up. Yeah. Yeah, I love that earlier on. Daddy, did you work hard at school? Dear Lord, I'm awful glad none of mine ever asked me that question. Anyway, moving on. But have you ever felt inadequate? We all feel inadequate at times, don't we? And the thing is about feeling inadequate, especially if it's an ongoing feeling inadequate, it does affect how we behave, doesn't it? Sometimes if you're feeling inadequate, it can make you defensive. It can make you sensitive to things. It can make you aggressive, make you a bit touchy about stuff, yes? And Zacchaeus, and the Bible talks about his story and talks about the things that he did. You kind of wonder why on earth would he, as a Jew, why would he work for the Romans? What more than that? Why would he rip off his own people? Why would he make his neighbors' lives harder just to please himself? And I wonder if that being of small stature was relevant to this because maybe his 
shortcomings. You see what I did there? Shortcomings. Yeah, oh, all right. Maybe his shortcomings actually played a part in driving his actions. Maybe growing up, he was picked on. Because it's true, isn't it? Remember, cast your mind back to when you were at school. That's going to be a bigger ask for some of us than others. But <laughs> there was always, was there? Always, in every group, there was always a little lad or a little girl who was shorty or, wasn't there? Always. Picked up. Human nature has always been like to find the one that is different by whatever nth degree and actually make them the butt of the jokes and so on. And maybe that happened to Zacchaeus. Maybe he was picked on because he was little. Maybe growing up he was a bit of an outsider. Maybe he was mocked. Whatever it was, he grew up into a man who was shaped in a particular way. He was dishonest. He was self-serving. And although he was rich and powerful, he was despised and looked down on. The people around him called him a sinner. And when they talked about sinner, that wasn't just like a word that was thrown out there. That was a real condemnation that he was a sinner. And the thing is, sometimes we take on actions to, to kind of make ourselves feel better about our inadequacies. And what all it does is actually make things worse. Because people despise us for it. People look down at us, on us for it. He was a man who was a sinner. People had no time for him. He actually, if he was a bit of an outcast growing up, his behaviors as he grew into a man meant that he was even more of an outcast. But he had heard about Jesus. And he had heard that Jesus was coming along. And whatever it was in him, and I would suggest that there was something in him that was deeply unhappy. There was something that was discontented. There was something that was not at peace because when he heard that Jesus was coming, he thought there was a hope for him if he could just see Jesus. That is not a man who is happy with his lot, is it? That is not a man that was content with his lot. He was actually looking for Jesus to make a difference in his life. And he was so desperate to catch a glimpse that when he can't see Jesus, he casts all sense of decorum and dignity to one side and he clambers up a tree. Clambers up a tree. What was it he was hoping for? Was he hoping that Jesus would set him free? Maybe. Maybe. Because if you are driven by negative views of yourself, if you are driven by guilt and shame that mars your life, a lot of the time you wish somebody would just take that away. Take those feelings away. Take that perspective about yourself away. And Jesus comes along and all the crowds are there and all the people are clamoring for Jesus' attention. And Jesus comes along and he stops at the bottom of the tree and he looks up and he says, Zacchaeus, this will date some of you, you come down for I'm coming to your house for tea. Yeah, that's it. Oh, we used to sing that one a long time ago, didn't we? Zacchaeus, come down. And the crowd are astonished. They're appalled. Zacchaeus, A, it's Zacchaeus. B, he's a tax collector. C, he's a sinner. D, he's little. What does he want him for? Zacchaeus, come down. And the crowd around were so quick to judge, so quick to judge Zacchaeus, so quick to judge Jesus. But Jesus chose to meet Zacchaeus. Here's the thing, and we need to remember it as we go through life. We are very quick to judge people, aren't we? We're very quick to make judgments about people. Very quick to tell people that they're in the wrong. Very quick to tell people that they are sinners. Don't get me wrong. There are times when we have to be very frank with each other about the lives that we live and the behaviors that we carry. But we are told not to judge and not to condemn. Instead, we are told to stir one another up to love and good works. Here's the thing. The crowd around the bottom of that tree were judging Zacchaeus. Jesus called him down to encourage him to a better way of living. The woman that had been caught in adultery, the crowd around her 
were judging her. Jesus encouraged her to move forward into a better way of living and walking closer to God. And even when in the early church, you know, sometimes churches talk about doing church discipline and that sort of thing. But even in the early church where they challenged and they disciplined people, it was very clearly with the heart that those people should be restored, brought back to God, brought back to the fold. And Jesus met with him. And we don't know what they said. But time in honest conversation, and this is a key point tonight, all right? Zacchaeus, so often, so often, and I've done it myself, so often sermons basically tell us to do better, don't they? You know, try harder. It's a bit like, almost like my sermons have been influenced by my school reports. Could do better if only he would try harder, if only he would concentrate you know, I was like that. And so often that's what sermons say to us, don't they? They say, do better, try harder, concentrate more. Actually, that's not what changed Zacchaeus. Time in honest conversation with Jesus transformed him. Where he, had, where he hadn't cared about people, he became compassionate. I will take half of my goods and I will give them to the poor. He became compassionate for those who were less well-off than him. Where he had been unjust, he became just. Where he had been miserly, let's be honest, Dickens could have used the name Zacchaeus as easily as Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. We'd have all got it, wouldn't we? But where he had been miserly, he became generous. Well, it's not just I will restore it. You see, this is a man that understands money. This is a man that understands compound interest. I, not just that I will restore it, but I will restore it fourfold. When Zacchaeus came down at that tree and went off to wherever he went off to to spend time talking with Jesus, when he had finished talking to Jesus, he was the same man. He had the same shortcomings. He had the same job. He was still a tax collector. But honest time with Jesus transformed him in all the negative things that were shaping his life and gave him, well, set him free to live and to be the man that he could be. Final thought tonight. Throughout our life, we pick up things that shape us. Things that we have said, things that we have done, things that have been said to us, things that have been done to us. We pick up things that shape us into who we are. It's why it's so important that we remember the impact that we have on children who are around us. And the trouble is, when these things happen, they can lead us into cul-de-sacs of behavior and attitude that can mar and can blight our lives now and even separate us from the grace of God for eternity. And it's not enough in these things to simply try harder. Matthew said it right at the beginning. When we, before we sang, our, before we played, we didn't sing, before we played our first song. How does this all start? It starts because of time with Jesus. By coming to Jesus. By letting him change us. And that's not just at the moment of conversion. But that is the ongoing experience. You see, tonight... Jesus wants to call us down out of the trees. Some of us are stuck in trees that are enormous. They're high, they're convoluted. They've got lots of twisted branches that affect us and make us up in different ways and then stare us in different ways. And Jesus wants to say, come down out of those trees. For some of us, they're just saplings. They're not massive trees that ensnare our lives, but they still have an impact on us. And Jesus says, come down out of those trees that are ensnaring and that are are affecting and that are shaping your life. Come down out of them. 
And by coming down and hearing Jesus and knowing his word and embracing his ways, we can find a different path. Zacchaeus was defined by the life that he had lived. He came down out of the tree, spent time with Jesus, and he was defined as a different type of man. Can I encourage you at some point to go on YouTube and look for Zacchaeus by Ishmael? Some of us will remember Ian Smale. His version of Zacchaeus is profound. And the last verse of it, having said all the way through, Zacchaeus was a nasty little man, the last verse of it say, says Zacchaeus was a jolly good fellow. And the people around him would have, not literally, but the change of attitude. They would have seen him as a nasty little man. After that, how do you think they saw him? He was transformed. Whatever is defining our lives, whatever is shaping us in a negative way, whatever is creating conflict in us, whatever is marring our experience of life, taking time to come down out of the tree and to hear Jesus, to know his word and embrace his ways can reset us. And you know what was the key that meant that this could happen? It comes earlier in the story. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. He wanted Jesus to make a difference. The only way Jesus can make a difference in us is when we want to let him change us and take time in honest conversation to hear what he's got to say. Amen? Let's pray. Teach us, O oh Lord, how we might find time with you that we might hear your voice coaxing us out of the branches that so ensnare and grip us so that we might walk free in this life that you have called us to. Amen.